So at the end of my fake wire surprise video, I mentioned that there's a lot of good cable, a lot of good wire to be had inside of some of these old uh, printer cables. And this is a Centronix printer cable here that's going to be our donor today. And we're going to take this apart and make some decent jumpers and get rid of these steel things. You know, that's just terrible. Anyways, let's do it. I'm not going to bother with desoldering and everything. I'm just going to cut these wires off. These are just going to be for donation anyways. I'll keep the ends here. I don't know what I ever use the Centronix one for, but the, the DB25 here, there I have some old equipment that uses these things still. So, so ever so carefully, so as not to cut myself or the nick the wire, I'm going to go back here about 15 centimeters, 6 inches-ish or so, and just ever so gently cut into it, and it's very soft on the outside the sheath is, this is very flexible stuff and just pull this guy off of here pull that back and do the same thing again a few times don't take too much you'll just stretch the wire or pull a muscle or something like that now you could always nick these off of here right now just nip them off so you don't have to pull this all the way off to the end there if this is as long as the jumpers that you're making are going to be then just cut it right now and make some jumpers out of these guys you don't have to necessarily get the whole thing it'll be easier to store just this part of the cable here than it would be to store all these little tiny wires and, and, and go all over the place so i've pulled enough back here so far to uh, more than get enough wire to replace these two steel wires here which i want to do and then take a reading on them and see if uh, the resistance on them is any less with these small wires and than it was with these steel wires. So if you recall from the fake wire video, the two jumpers that were made of steel, I measured those using this same meter and it was nearly an ohm. Uh, I've zeroed out again here right at the tip, so we've zeroed this uh, right there, right there. And let's take a measurement on our newly built leads and see what sort of resistance we get. And looking up close here, that's about 0.2 of an ohm. So uh, I'm going to say we're roughly, easily four times better than the other ones, being almost an ohm compared to 0.2. Uh, big improvement. So we're going to test out one of the leads that we just made. It's going to give us a secondary benefit of giving us a more accurate uh, resistance reading. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an amp through it. This is our amps on this side, the fluke meter. And this is uh, set to 200 millivolts across the lead. And I'm just adjusting it up to one amp here. And get it just ever so close call it good and here's the actual circuit so we have an adjustable power supply and we're running some current through our jumper these are the wires hooking everything else up that is a seven and a half ohm uh, load these are two 15 well three 15 ohm resistors but we're using two of them to give us seven and a half uh, ohms here and that allows me to adjust the supply over there to give me the appropriate amount of amperage so our resistance across this wire is determined by measuring the voltage across that wire times the current flowing through it. The current flows the same through all the stuff here. So we get one amp, which makes it real easy, and we get 114 millivolts across this jumper. So therefore our resistance is 114 milliohms. We'll also recall that when we did our measurement with the analog meter there, the Simpson, we had both of our both of our uh, new jumpers hooked up and uh, in series and we got approximately 0.2 of an ohm as a reading well that's fairly close because they're both the same so close to the same and uh, double this and you're going to get uh, 230 millivolts 230 milli ohms as well so our reading on our simpson meter was pretty close so you have the option of putting multiple wires into one of these clips if you want um, lower your resistance uh, raise the current carrying capability um, I used a piece of heat shrink right here just to make it nice and firm. It doesn't really need to be there, but why not? Uh, and I'm kind of halfway done. Don't forget to 
put the boots on in the appropriate direction and also that piece of heat shrink needs to go on here before you solder all of these all these three together on this case you know use four or five six whatever you like just weave them together and it comes up pretty good <laughs> 